After months of research and slowly removing old linoleum off our 100-year-old hardwood flooring, it's finally time to restore them and see if we can bring them back to life and lay bathroom tile and new hardwood floors to match. Hello guys, welcome back to the cottage and to our renovations. This is a very exciting week and something I have been dying to accomplish and prepping to accomplish for a really long time. We are finally restoring the original floors in the cottage and also laying the quote unquote new floors that match the old floors, which is pine, not long leaf pine. They don't make that anymore, but new pine, shorter pine um, in the addition. Also the tile floor that's going to be herringbone that's going in the primary bathroom and the laundry room. But the amount of research that I have put into this process is insane. Months and months and months of reading forums, watching tutorials. I've eventually just had to make a plan of attack. So here's my plan. Obviously I'm moving forward with this plan, but if you guys have any expertise, tips, things that you've tried and have actually worked, please comment, please let us know your wisdom. I just had to go with it and make a plan of attack based on the research that I had done. Now the old house is on pier and beams. It's a different type of foundation. The new house is on concrete. And the concrete, as much as they could, they tried to make it level right underneath the kind of like seam between the old house and the new house, um, but we do need space to bring that that the level of the concrete up a little bit, which is perfect because ideally you want hardwood floors to be glued or nailed down to a subfloor, which is made of plywood. So we have concrete. Then we're putting a layer of waterproofing. Concrete naturally is more porous. Concrete has a tendency to have moisture or could get moisture. Now we are above grade, meaning we're actually above ground level. We, it actually helps a lot with the moisture that the concrete has, but we definitely needed a vapor barrier. So we are gonna be using a product called Red Guard and we're gonna be painting it on the floor. So it's concrete, then Red Guard, then plywood, which is gonna create our subfloor. And then on top of that, we're gonna do the glue, which the wood floor is going to stick to. And in a few years, I'll let you know how it all held up. <laughs> Cause that's, I'm not gonna know if it works for a while. Um, but basically, I think we have a pretty good plan of attack. So we spent the morning cleaning, scraping off all of the drops and unevenness. The concrete is level because it's new and it's had time to cure. So there's no, the, the moisture is very, very low in the concrete. Um, so we just needed to make sure that there wasn't any drywall droppings. I scraped all of that up. Romeo came behind me and vacuumed everything. We've done it now several times. So we're thinking it's about as clean as it's going to get. And we are ready to do the Red Guard vapor barrier. We are doing the most for these floors. Now you could get away with a lot less than this. I know you can, but we are doing the most when it comes to making sure that these floors are perfection and they last a really, really, really long time. Our floors have also been here, so they've had time to adjust to the climate, to, you know, the space. Okay, so we have Red Guard waterproofing. We have some rollers on sticks. Shed resistant Wooster Pro for walling, ceilings, decks, and concrete. Uh, so we're thinking that will work. We don't know how stinky it's gonna be. I can't imagine it smells good. Mm. Ooh, it's pink! Oh, it's jelly. Well, I guess the time has come to paint over our names in the concrete. I always knew they would be covered up. Oh. 
Hensley, mom and dad. Oh, I guess you can kind of still see them. Romeo and McKenna. And it is red in here, like hot red, like red hot red, pink-ish. Two coats and three coats in the shower. Um, just for extra, I may put more. I'm curious to see if I need to put it on the walls too. So we do have extra of the red card. So today is plywood and tile day. So we ordered 25 four by eight sheets of plywood and also 15 of the concrete. Necessary but ridiculous step that we have to take is since we are putting the half inch plywood to build a sub floor and also raise the floor up to the old house, we also have to raise the concrete up for the tile so that all the floors are the same level. So we're having to put that down too. The sheets are very expensive, so it's okay. I think that they were around 10 bucks, nine bucks, something like that. So it's not a crazy investment, but it's still something we have to do. So let's do this. So this is the cement board. We're lifting the floors half inch. We're kind of just laying them all out, staggering the pieces. Um, and to cut the cement board, we're just scoring it. I'm just using the knife I already have and putting down a ruler, long ruler where I need to cut it. Then cutting it a couple of times. And then it kind of scores the concrete so you can pop it and you can pop it and it'll break. Putting down this plywood, <laughs> cutting all of the pieces that were needed to build this massive puzzle that is our floor plan, which is really not that hard. It's just you needed the right amount of pieces. It took all of our body strength and I was so sore this morning, but it's all down. And my goal was to get all of it kind of put on the floor where it needed to go to make sure that the floors were going to be level and kind of line it up. I tested it with some wood, um, the wood flooring that we're gonna be putting down and it is really, really good. So we are ready to nail it down. So we're gonna nail the plywood to the concrete. This is a pneumatic concrete T-nailer. That's about all I know. It nails stuff into concrete. This is about the time my knee pads come in really handy. <laughs>
And here we are laying porcelain tile on the floors in the bathroom, in the primary bathroom, and also in the laundry room. But I wanna start in the primary bathroom. This is what it's going to look like when it is all done. If you guys remember, I found this cask wood flooring. Loved it. It was kind of like a wood look, but it was porcelain. So it was better for a bathroom. I found it and it was like discontinued. So I called around everywhere and found it in Houston and I bought all they had. But they do have this in other colors. So if you like this look, I'll leave the information linked for you. And I really want it to be laid in a herringbone pattern just like this. We are mixing up the thin set. It's going to be a creamy peanut butter consistency. We're also using a gray thin set mortar um, because we're going with a somewhat of a darker gray grout in here to match the tile. I got this nifty little le level laser line. It's gonna help me find the center of the room and keep everything straight. It's nice because it'll kind of clamp to anything. So this edge will hit the line and then this edge will hit the line and we'll use the spacers in between. You know, we'll have it eighth of an inch and then we'll keep going like that. So this one will hit the line and then this one will hit the line like that. And then it'll create a herringbone pattern all the way up. generous with the thin set in this area um, than I did in the penny tile because the penny tiles are so small. You guys, to be honest, I have been struggling. <laughs> First of all, the fact that I have to walk from the bedroom out here to cut every piece is literally driving me crazy but I'm getting better at like okay now that I've gotten all the way to the wall I can count okay I need I need six pieces at this same length and then I've been trying to like mark 45 degree angle with a square and then I look down and I'm like oh there are 45 degree angle marks on this thing the whole time seeing I rented this table saw for the week and I'm just cutting all of the pieces to size and I'm struggling not to break them still even though I'm cutting them with the saw and I just don't know what to do. And I'm thinking maybe like this is getting dull or something. I don't know. I feel like it shouldn't be like breaking like this, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll see if these work. At least they fit. I am nearing the end. I have literally two more spaces that need to be filled. And the tile in the primary bathroom is down. This is day four of working on it. I haven't worked on it all day for four days, but herringbone is definitely tedious. Hardest part of this whole process was the borders and all the cutting that had to be done and they're all so specific, it would make me very frustrated. <laughs> and I think that that's why it took me four whole days to finish. If you like jigsaw puzzles, 
you'll love to tile in a herringbone pattern. So I'm gonna pick the grout color, but I want it really tonal for in here. And also seal the grout after. And then the floors in here will be completely done. Today, we lay the floors. <laughs> you guys, I think that this is going to make a major difference in how the house feels. It's going to feel that much more finished, you know, in terms of the foundational elements. I'm using a combination of glue and strategic nails. I did a lot of research on glues. Which ones were the best ones? Which one were the, uh, just everything. So I determined that this one was gonna be the best for what we were doing. Um, this is from a company called Bostic. It's kind of like, I don't know, everyone talks about it as like the best, the best. So I'm like, I want the best. We want the best. So Bostic, but the multi-grip was cheaper than the Wood Plus. There was a Wood Plus version. Um, this carry, the Lowe's carries this one. And I went with the multi-grip. I didn't think we needed to pay like 80 more dollars per container. So this is one area in the hallway that I've had to patch quite a bit. Um, I just had to. So now the floor, instead of running this way, will run that way. And then we'll put a transition piece here because a lot of these boards are not really cut exactly to size. And this is where the concrete meets. I think it's just better to have a clean, uh, little transition piece on top. So I got these smaller pieces in and then we'll wood putty them. So we're gonna start right here. really hope all my research pays off. It hasn't steered me wrong yet. This product should also be ready to be troweled down. Like, it's not something that we have to mix up. And moisture control membrane. See, this is also moisture control. So not only did we put the waterproofing red stuff down, we're also doing this. So if I have moisture problems with this floor, that's gonna be weird. Because I think you can use this straight to concrete, honestly. And if we hadn't had to raise the floors up, I probably would have considered it. To a half to a three quarters of an inch away from the wall as well. The crack is gonna be covered anyways. So it's like, so the oils in my skin are helping to get it off. Um, so I'm wearing long sleeves and pants today so that I don't have any more again on my skin, which is working in my favor. Knee pads are necessary. They help with your knees. So we have gone through almost two big tubs of this um, glue. And we've done the hallway, the guest bedroom, the guest bedroom closet, and this, the, this hallway, and then here. Uh, so we've got that way, that closet, and then my closet in here to do. I, I think I think we're doing pretty good. I mean, it's sticky, you guys. This I mean, this stuff is pretty good. So I am using nails as well to keep 
the pieces straight and where they need to go while they dry, so I'm using them periodically, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. So right when we were finishing the primary bedroom, this is going outside, we found the prettiest box, or a prettiest bundle of wood. And it has all of these like rich knots in it, so we're kind of staggering those in like right when you walk in. I feel like doing it yourself, you get this attention to detail. It's like you put kind of like the not so pretty ones underneath where the bed is gonna go, or where you're not gonna see it, and you put the pretty ones in your walkways, and right here in the inch you know like there's there's just like something to be said about doing it yourself and being able to have control over that um, so we're kind of feathering but this this one is gorgeous all this rich tones the day has officially come that i share what we've been doing we are sanding the old floors, the 110 year old floors. So we are using a drum sander. I rented this from a local kind of hardware rental, larger machinery type company. I rented the drum sander and 60 grit drum sandpaper. Thinking 60 grit would cut it. Now, 60 grit would have cut it, literally, if I wanted to go over it about five times. <laughs> We just have a lot of areas in the old floor that need to be evened out as well. It's almost like the floor, you know, ha where the joints are, they're a little bit up and we need to smooth that out. So I went back today, picked up 20 grit sandpaper and also 36 grit sandpaper. The lower the number of the sandpaper, the more coarse the grit on the sandpaper is, the more it's going to take off. And of course, the higher the number, the finer the grit, the softer it is. So we're going over it with something really strong right now to even it out, smooth it out, get off things we need to get off. Then we're gonna go back over it with a different machine, make it a little bit, you know, like just finer. It's gonna look better. So we're, that's kind of our process and it's looking very good. So this is what we're working on so far. You can still see where there's some old stuff in here that we need to get off. That's where the floor was actually lower, but it is working because this floor used to look like this. So we've gone from this to that. So the most important thing with this machine is that you keep it moving. You do not want to stop during the process because it will just barrel a hole. This little lever right here lowers the sandpaper and raises it. So I'm putting it down slowly, moving the machine as I start. And when I get to the end, when I'm about to stop, I kind of keep moving it and I feather it up so that there's no harsh lines.
Our final machine rental was a finishing sander and we got 80, 120, and 150 grit screens. This is a different type of sander, so it takes something called a screen. We used the 150 on the new floors and then stepped up the old floors going over it once with 80, once with 120, and then finally 150. Okay, it's finally time to seal these floors. We have gone over them and sanded them with just about every machine, every level of grit. We have done the most that we can for these floors, given that they're 100 years old. The new ones, perfection, obviously. Needed very minimal sanding. We're just gonna seal the old floors. I love the color as is. I wanna keep it natural and a little bit rustic in here. Um, so we didn't really wanna overfill the cracks. We did, we did some that were bigger, but that's part of its charm and that's kind of the look that I was going for. But we are going to have to stain the new floor in order to make it match the old floor because 100 year old pine has had some age and it's rich in it a lot. The new pine floors are just too blonde. I have researched every sealer for woods possible. What I've come down to is that I definitely didn't want to do an oil based sealer or an oral based stain on the new floors. It tends to yellow more over time. I've seen it on furniture. I don't want to do it on floors and where a decade ago, water-based stains and water-based sealers kind of had a bad rap for their durability. They just weren't as durable as the oil. They've come a long way. I've done a lot of research. They've come a long way, and especially if you use a really quality one. So, after researching it, Bona Traffic HD is the best on the market and it's very just as durable as an oil-based sealer. It will yellow, and I'm not saying it won't completely yellow, but it'll yellow less. Wipe these floors down, we vacuum them, how many times? 50 times. <laughs> like, literally, we've done the most. It's lower VOC, it doesn't stink as much, I'll tell you in a minute. We're probably gonna wear masks anyways. Oh no, yeah, it's not. Does it stink? Uh, it has a scent to it, but no, like it's it's low VOC. Okay, do I shake this? And then there's enough space in the bottle. That's why I was like, is there gonna be enough space to pull up this in there? Pour this in there. Immediately shake. <laughs> I'm nervous, you guys. I've been nervous about this whole process. Okay, five to 10 minutes. Okay, while we let that settle in for five to 10 minutes. Tested some stains because this is the new floor right here. So you can see the difference. Old floor in front of me, new floor that I'm sitting on. I tested this one. It's a water-based stain and it's in color golden oak. And when I had like a sample card, I'm like that is closest to my eye to it. Um, so I tested them without conditioner. Uh, we're gonna condition the new floors too uh, because pine kind of has a splotchy nature and so for it to look a little more smooth, um, we're gonna we're gonna um, condition it first. But I tested golden oak. I feel like it's the best color match, and all the floors are different throughout the house, and they have different colors that kind of come through. And I think the new pine will too, especially when it's conditioned as well. Um, but that's the color match, and so feel like it's 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 pretty good i i couldn't i don't know if we could get any closer and then this red tone will come through here that matches kind of like this range so i feel like it's pretty good so we're going with golden oak i did it on those corners here because those were going to be covered by cabinetry anyways i have this little felt pad see this <laughs> and a squeegee a T-bar rather. Basically what we're gonna use to move it around. This is great for water-based type red. Um, if we were doing oil-based, we would use different products like lamb's wool or rollers or something. You can use rollers too, I think. We're pouring a six inch line and we're keeping it wet, so. With the grain.
hope you guys enjoyed the process of restoring our 100 year old floors and also laying new floors and tile and for our floors to finally be in their last stage. I just ordered six more gallons of sealer because I definitely want to do, I wanted to test it first because it is not cheap. Those gallons are about $150 a piece. Now granted, we are saving tons of money by doing these floors ourselves, but it has taken us, like everything out of us <laughs> to do these floors ourselves from laying the new ones and the subfloor and all the sanding stages and then the ceiling stages, it has put a toll on us physically for sure, but we have saved so much money by doing it ourselves and I was, be, I was able to be very particular about how I wanted them and um, just overall experience something new and do something and try something new. So I think we did a pretty good job. I ordered six more gallons of that sealer. I do think we need two coats and then we won't ever have to do this again. You know, it's, it's, it's gonna be done. We are gonna take this stage by stage, but it's gonna be the exact same process they look so beautiful. I, it's everything I could have wanted. So we are moving in very soon. Now that we are in the final stages of the floors being done, our plumber was here for the last couple of days setting up the guest bathroom. So we are finally gonna have running water and a functioning toilet, which is exceptional. <sighs> you guys, there's more makeovers coming very soon. I've actually already finished one that you will have to wait until next video to find out. We've just been doing so many things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've missed any of the renovation videos, you can catch up. I have playlists for every room and the renovation as a whole. I'll leave them linked down below. And subscribe. If you're not subscribed, join our family. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload here and also over on my vlog channel for more behind the scenes. Really exciting things. I will see you guys again next video. Bye guys. What good helpers do. This is what good helpers do? The ones that are paid well, I'm just saying. Are you paid well? No. <laughs> <laughs>